Welcome to The Lead. I'm Jake Tapper. Right now, President Trump is in California to visit the border with Mexico. Any minute, he is expected to take a tour of a new section of border fencing. It's a replacement border fence that officials say has been planned dating back to 2009, before Donald Trump was even running for president. And there's a real divide within the Trump administration about whether this fence is actually the Trump border wall, as it says on that plaque bolted into it reading that it is, quote, first section of President Trump's border wall. This barrier has been planned in some way, shape, or form for at least a decade, but Trump is, of course, the one who pushed for funding and made it a priority. Thus, the money was finally allocated in 2017 with the design that the president approved. And border agents do give the president credit for making this a priority, which, in their view, neither Obama nor Bush did sufficiently. Now, detractors, however... They can point out that this is not being paid for by Mexico. And a running joke among border agents, I'm told by a good source, is that the self-congratulatory plaque will serve as a decent foothold for those looking to hop the fence. And then there's this. This fencing is decidedly not an immense concrete wall, as Trump promised it would be on the campaign trail. The president was convinced by experts in his administration that bollard fencing was smarter than a wall. So he went with that. And you could give him credit for that. But at the end of the day, we have a fence with a plaque on it calling it a wall, which, however you slice it, it's kind of strange. Perhaps in a similar vein, the president's visit today comes after he retreated from his threat to close the southern border altogether and after he suddenly withdrew his pick for ICE director. CNN's Caitlin Collins is in San Ysidro, California. And Caitlin, why is the president now backing off this threat to close the border? Well, Jake, the president says it's because Mexico is apprehending more people, preventing them from coming up to the U.S. border. But also he's heeding warnings from not only business, le business leaders, but also Republican officials who have been telling the president for days that closing down the border would be devastating economically to the United States. It was going to affect, affect ports of entries like the one behind me, San Ysidro, one of the busiest in the Western Hemisphere and responsible for hundreds of thousands of dollars in trade and also thousands of people crossing back and forth every day, going to their homes, going to their offices, responsible for communities like this, and it would greatly affect them. Right now, Jake, the president seems to be heeding those warnings for now. I never changed my mind at all. Uh, I may shut it down at some point. President Trump on the border today after backing off his threat to close it. I'd rather do tariffs. Though officials insisted he'd follow through. It certainly isn't a bluff. You can take the president seriously. The president now says he'll give Mexico a year to stop the surge of Central American migrants and drugs crossing the U.S. border. If they don't, we're going to tariff their cars at 25 percent coming into the United States. Today, Trump praised Mexico after blasting the country last week. Because Mexico has been absolutely terrific for the last four days. They're apprehending everybody. A DHS official tells CNN Mexico has apprehended 1,000 migrants a day, double the levels from last week. On his flight to the border town of Calexico, Trump tweeted he'll be visiting a portion of the new wall being built. But what he'll see is a far cry from what he promised on the campaign trail. I'll tell you what it's going to be made of. It's going to be made of hardened concrete. Trump will be standing in front of an upgraded section of fencing that already existed. That fencing is now 30 feet high and bears a plaque with the president's name. I think part of that's just a, uh, it's an optic to have the president stand in front of the wall indicates immediately to any viewer that he's at the border. Trump's visit coming just hours after the White House suddenly withdrew the nomination for the director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Ron's a good man, but we're going in a tougher direction. We want to go in a tougher direction. Three sources tell CNN senior advisor Stephen Miller directly lobbied the president to pull Ron Vitello's nomination, arguing he was soft on closing the southern border. The move blindsided DHS officials who until Friday morning thought it was a clerical error. A source telling CNN even DHS Secretary Kirsten Nielsen was unaware the nomination was being pulled and still hasn't officially been told. 
Now, Jake, Vaughn Vitello is a 30-year veteran of Border Patrol, and he was scheduled to be with the president on this trip today. But yesterday, he was told he was not going to be coming any longer. And now today, he finds out he is no longer going to be the ICE director either. And Caitlin, one source close to the White House even noted that they had just burned a lot of political capital for his nomination, apparently for nothing. Yeah, DHS officials weren't the only people blindsided by this. Republican lawmakers were, too, people who have been trying to get this guy confirmed to this position. And also, this is someone who's been leading the ICE agency since last summer. And now they're deciding to withdraw his nomination at a time when enforcement officials say that their system is at a breaking point. That's the confusion here. But also, there's some inside the White House, too, Jake, because officials are wondering if Stephen Miller is telling the president this guy isn't hard line enough to deal with the president to represent him in this in this capacity capacity, then who is going to be able to do that? Who is hardline enough to meet the White House's standards that could also get confirmed by Congress? Jake. All right. Caitlin Collins traveling with President Trump. Thank you so much. Joining me now is Republican Senator John Kennedy of Louisiana. Senator, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. As Caitlin just reported, the White House suddenly withdrew the nomination of Ronald uh, Vitello to lead ICE. He was all set to go. His nomination was on track. The Senate Judiciary Committee was set to vote on him next week. But senior advisor Stephen Miller at the White House convinced the president to pull the nomination because they didn't think Vitello was tough enough. Um, what's, your, what's your take on all this? The president apparently did this without consulting Congress, without consulting Secretary Nielsen. Well, the president, Jake, is entitled to surround himself with advisors of his choice. I don't, I don't want us to take our eye off the ball here. We're, we're at the breaking point at the border. In March, we had 100,000 people come into this country illegally. That's the most in 10 years. We're, we're on track to set records here. And uh, I, I don't look, personnel, that's up to the president. Uh, but, but, but the new head of ICE alone can't solve this problem. The United States Congress is going to have to help. And frankly, we need help from our Central American friends and from Mexico as well. Well, you're kind of making my point because this is obviously a time of there's a humanitarian crisis at the border. Uh, it is a difficult time. Uh, the U.S. government is facing uh, this very challenging situation. And then for whatever reason, uh, this nominee this, this for, for, to be head of ICE is kind of ignominiously just thrown by the side of the road. Um, doesn't that concern you? Doesn't that? Yes, of course. The president has every right to do it. He can. He's the exec, chief executive. He can do whatever he want, mm -hmm. wants. But, but isn't the way this is being done without consulting uh, you and your colleagues in the Senate, without consulting Secretary uh, Nielsen, doesn't that kind of undermine the whole argument that this is a real crisis that we're in? Well, Jake, I'm hesitant to comment because I, j I just don't know why the president did it. I don't know the background. I mean, you know, you, uh, if it's Mr. Miller had second thoughts, it, it, he probably should have expressed those uh, those thoughts, his first thoughts, a little little uh, a little while ago. Uh, but the world's not going to spin off its axis here. We do need a competent person, uh, an aggressive person who's head of ICE. But, but we've got bigger problems than that, that frankly, right, right now at the border. And I know we've been through this the last six months where the Democrats say we don't have a problem at the border and the Republicans say we do. we got a problem at the border. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. It's not like the problem we used to have. Yeah, absolutely. But we've got a serious problem. Sure, especially with all these families coming and there isn't, there isn't the, the housing uh, to take them all in and, and, and keep them. Um, I want you to take a listen uh, to the secretary. Well, well, Go ahead, sir. Well, I was just going to say that there are two problems. Number one, our asylum laws need to be changed. And number two, you know, rather than, rather than cutting off the money to El Salvador and, and Guatemala and, and our other Central American countries, I, I would like to see the president call a, a, an immigration summit with, with pre the president of Mexico and El Salvador and Guatemala and Nicaragua and Honduras and let's say, how can, let's say, how can we solve this problem? Similar to what we did with Planned Colombia, when we had a lot of problem with, problems with the drug cartels and, and cocaine coming out of Colombia in the late 1990s and in, in 2000, uh, uh, into the, the next decade, we sat down with the president of Colombia. We put up some of the money in return for specific commitments. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I think that would help a lot. But, but the, the thing that would help the most is to design some asylum laws. It looks like somebody designed them on purpose. All you have to do right now, Jake, as you know, 
is make it to American soil, say the magic words, you turn free into the country, you're told to, back, to come back in two years to court, and of course nobody ever turns back up. Well, you know, uh, you, could, you, could, you could drive over around D.C., pick the first person sleeping under, under the interstate and say, can you draw us, uh, uh, up some asylum laws? And theirs would make better sense than the ones we have right now. I, I know you're speaking hyperbolically. I, I think statistics show that most people do show up for their hearing. But I take your point, Central Americans and the asylum laws, that is the situation.